The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 479 Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is the chief blogger of the Ambitionista.com, along with, you know, many other hats going on or many other things going on. And I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Heidi Nazarudin. Heidi, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi, hi, Sheena. Thank you for having me. Yeah, my name is Heidi, and I am the blogger in chief at The Ambitionista. It's a blog for working women. It's doing really well, and I'm also the CEO of Mark Media, where a digital agency based here in Los Angeles. And uh, those are essentially the two things that I do. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Heidi, what's your cultural background? I'm half Singaporean, half Malaysian. But I I grew up in a lot of places. I grew up in the UK, New York, and now I live in Los Angeles. I'm an LA girl. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence quote is make your own luck. It was actually, it was, it, I, I came across it on a, in a random poster somewhere 10 years ago, but it really resonated with me because I do feel that in life, you know, I've, I've, I've worn many hats. I've, I've done a lot of things well, and I feel like it's really about knowing, you know, knowing your strengths and, and then just, just, just doing it. Like, and the more, the more hardworking you are, the more luckier you get. So that's my favorite thing to say to myself, make your own luck. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize, like, we have to go there and take action to create the luck that you mentioned, right? And the more we keep on going, no matter what happens, because there's going to be days where we just feel like all our luck is gone. We just keep going until, you know, we reach that end goal. And then when we reach it, we just keep going again. So thanks for sharing that. And, you know, in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I really, and I love this question. I, I thought about it a little bit. And I, I think self-confidence really means someone who is very aware of both their strengths and their weaknesses, but they're okay with that. You know, someone who's just very happy with themselves, but are blissfully unaware of what their their strengths and weaknesses, that's just someone who's delusional. <laughs> you know, it's, it's self-confidence doesn't mean that you you say, oh, everything is great with me. I'm, I'm awesome. But it's really, really knowing yourself and, and, and accepting that. Because if you know what your flaws are and you're okay with that, that, that makes you almost invincible. Because like, you know, you know what you can't do and you're fine with it. Thanks for sharing that. And I love that definition. I know sometimes we feel like our weaknesses is what brings us down. Um, but sometimes our weaknesses can be, can be our greatest strength and actually can, you know, help us in our favor. And, you know, the more women or people can realize that, you know, when we embrace our weaknesses and our flaws, that it actually helps us. To, to know your weaknesses, especially as you get older, it's really crucial when you're trying to do something well. Because if you know that you can't do something, you're going to say, oh, you know what, I'm really bad at A, B, and C. I'm going to find someone who's really great at it rather than saying, I'm I'm perfect. This is, you know, I can do everything. And, and that's the worst thing that can I feel would, would bring someone down or prevent them from achieving further success. Because if you don't realize what you can't do, you, you're probably going to be stuck in, in that on that level. I totally agree with you on that. So thanks for sharing that great definition. And Heidi, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? <laughs> my life before that I feel when I was younger you know in, in, in when I was at university or, or in my early 20s I was very self-conscious as well as I was always worrying about what people would say or what would people think about me or you know just in general like just caring a little bit too much about what people think of me when it doesn't really matter and as I get more confident I realized you know what it doesn't really matter what people say about me as long as I'm a, I know I'm a good person and I'm doing the best that I can for myself and the people that I really care about and my family my closest friends and everyone else it it doesn't matter and once I realized that my life was so much more happier (laughs) you know like I don't care I don't care what you say about me I just I'm just gonna live my life and there's there's a freedom that comes from that that is it's priceless 
Thanks for sharing that. And I, I know that's something most people, you know, deal with is worrying about what other people think. I mean, we're all guilty of it, right? And, you know, the more you just work on yourself and learn to love yourself, like, those things actually matter less. And, you know, half the time, the people who you think are worrying about you aren't even worrying about you, right? They're, they're worrying about themselves most of the time. Right. They, they have their own issues and they're, they're projecting whatever those issues are on you. If, for example, someone's, you know, worrying whether you're, you're wearing something too revealing and how you're, you're presenting yourself to the world, honestly, they're really worrying about themselves and how they are being perceived by the world. And working with a lot of clients, I, you know, I, I own an agency and I have, you know, hundreds of clients have have my job is actually telling them not to care about what people think. So it, it really is a problem. And I feel like more people can just let go of this. What, what would people say about me if I say this or if I do that? It, the world will be so much better. Yeah, totally. So thanks for sharing that. And, you know, what was that point in your life when you realized, you know, like you mentioned, you just didn't care what people thought of you anymore. You just went ahead and did, you know, your own thing. You went out there and lived life on your own terms. What was that aha moment? I, I never really had like an aha moment. I feel I progress in life uh, incrementally. I mean, it was a it was a slow but steady reali- realization that I don't have to care about what people think, you know. And um, I think that comes with maturity. And I, like I said, I'm very self aware and also introspective. And and it's something that happened over a period of time. I can't I can't really say when, but I definitely know that you know by the time I I hit my late twenties and now I'm I'm thirty seven years old, I realize exactly what my my strengths are exactly what my faults are and i accept it and second i realized uh, it's not my job to make people happy my job is to be a good person and be the best person for myself and for people that closest to me and as long as i know i'm a good person and i'm doing things well for you know for for myself and my family everyone else doesn't really matter like that's why you know sometimes on instagram people say terrible things about me and you know what like i don't care i don't know you it doesn't affect me at all because i know it's not true the people that I love know is not true. And most people can see through that. And, and that is the freedom that um, I have that I don't care. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I love how you mentioned you had, you know, a slow and steady, you know, realization. Some people feel like if they're too slow in something, they're not doing it right. And, you know, everyone goes at their own pace, no matter how fast or slow it is, as long as you're, you know, doing better, right? No matter if it's just a single step or 20 steps or 10,000 steps, at least you're moving forward versus backwards. And, you know, because of that, what's your life been like now? My life now, I would say I'm at a very good spot where things, you know, I have two thriving businesses. I have my, I know I have a great partner in life and I, I know who my friends are. I know where, who my, my family, they love me regardless of what's happening in my life. And I think that's why I, a lot of things don't affect me anymore because like I said, if you if you know yourself well, you know your faults, your weaknesses, your strengths, and you accept it, everything else is is kind of just is, it will just kind of like go over you. It doesn't affect you. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, Heidi, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self confidence. What'd be that one tip you would give to her? My one tip to women is learn to love love yourself first. A lot of women, my friends, my clients, and even my a lot of my followers, they they think that okay, if I if I do this, then you know maybe someone would would love me, or if if I buy this, or if I do that. And honestly, you really need to learn yourself first before you you think about how other things would make you happy. And if women would love to accept themselves and love themselves first, everything else would really fall into place. This is something that I personally learned, and it's something that I've seen from my friends as well. It's really about you loving yourself and putting yourself first. And once you you know how to do that, everything else is is gravy. And that's uh, my number one tip. Thanks for sharing that great tip. And I totally agree. You know, everyone should learn to love themselves first. And there's nothing wrong with that. When you learn to love yourself and get to know yourself, everything else, you know, starts attracting to you. And, you know, you can, you know, that love overflows, right? And that's when, you know, the universe will grant you or whatever you believe in will grant you the things that you want. Anything bad happens or good happens or if, you know, you're you're alone, you know, you, you, you're going to be OK because because the fact that you're so comfortable with yourself, you don't need an external source of, you know, someone or something to tell you you're a great person. You don't need that fancy bag. You can you know, you can get lose a promotion or lose a job or lose a client. And it's bad, but it won't affect you that much that you're going to be so depressed because you're like, you know what? Yes, 
this thing happened to me what do i have to do to move ahead and instead of this thing happened to me must be something wrong with me and i'm bad and, and then you know you get into a spiral but if you understand that sometimes things just happen and it's not about you it's just something that happened you just have to move forward you're, you're gonna you're gonna deal with obstacles in life well and in everyone's life there's always going to be obstacles and things that happen thanks for sharing that and yeah you know I, I agree you know sometimes things happen and sometimes we have to see it in a different perspective like you know maybe that that happened for a good reason you know maybe something worse could have happened if it if it really did happen right and we just keep moving forward you know I know sometimes we feel like it's the end of the world and nobody likes this or cares about us but you know it could be a benefit versus you know something negative so thanks for sharing that and if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out you know your Instagrams or any links or social media profiles we can connect with yeah, I like to joke that I, I reside in Los Angeles, but I really live on Instagram at The Ambitionista. That's my main social platform and I post, you know, too much there. <laughs> but if that's the best place to connect with me. And uh, if you want to know more about me, head out to theambitionista.com. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Heidi, you can also head on over to the com and search for Heidi's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just want to thank Heidi for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Heidi. Thank you. Thank you, Sheena. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Sign up for our free membership site to get more amazing resources for self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.